Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Hack and in this video you're checking out a brand new Cyberpunk 2077 build. This build is called the Engineer, a shotgun toting grenade chucking tech weapon specialist. This build takes a dynamic approach to combat focusing on face melting upfront damage, mobility, weaving in and out of cover, and creating opportunities for ourselves with an unpredictable arsenal of grenades and wall piercing rounds, as well as smart homing technology. Needless to say, this build is a beast in all encounters and an absolute blast to play. In this video, we'll cover everything you need to know to make it work, including the primary attributes, best weapons and gear, cyberware options, and all the perks you'll want. So let's get started. All right, first, let's talk starting attributes. Our primary focuses on this build, as I mentioned, are gonna be shotguns, tech weapons, and grenades. To power those shotguns early, we'll want six total points into the body attribute, so you can add three at the starting screen. This, of course, powers the Annihilation skill tree, which improves our skill with shotguns. The next primary attribute we'll want to invest in is Technical Ability, which will power both our Engineering and Crafting skill trees. Those will be very important as well. So add three more points here for a total of six. Now your final starting attribute point is really up to you, but I recommend putting that last point into the Reflexes attribute for a few reasons. Number one, pistols and rifles are fairly common early on in the game, more so than shotguns, I feel like, so this will help make the build a bit more flexible early on. And number two, there is a unique perk in the blade skill tree, which will help empower this build even more. You can unlock that perk at reflexes level four. So we'll talk about that when we get to the perks section later on. Now, as far as the final stats go for this build, you'll earn 49 additional attribute points throughout your journey in Cyberpunk 2077 as you get to level 50. Now we'll definitely want to use those attribute points to max out some of our stats, but you won't be able to max out all five of them. So what I recommend is this. 20 points total for the body attribute. That's an additional 14 points you'll need to add throughout the game. 20 points total into the technical ability stat. That's another 14 points you'll need to add throughout the game. 20 points total into the cool stat. That's an additional 16 points you'll need there. Reflexes, we can leave this at four, and Intelligence will bump up to eight. That's an additional five points over the duration of the game. Now, obviously, this is flexible. This is just my recommendations. Remember, at 20 attribute points, you'll be able to grab the final perk in the skill tree, what's called a trait, and those are pretty powerful. So we'll want the final traits for body, technical, and cool, in my opinion. If you don't want those final traits, you don't have to push it up all the way to 20. You can distribute those points into other places. For life path on this build, I decided to play my engineer as a junkerer or a tinkerer of sorts. Basically somebody who's able to put together any kind of tech with his bare hands and whatever spare parts he's able to find lying around. For me, Nomad made the most sense for this type of character that I wanted to build. And some of the life path specific dialogue choices for Nomad actually do fit in with this theme. So I'm glad I picked it. If that's the theme that you're going for as well, then I definitely recommend that one. Let's talk weapons and gear now. First of all, this build is focused on shotguns, which we said two types specifically that you'll want on hand at all times, and you'll switch between these depending on the situation. Number one is gonna be the Satara Double Barrel Tech Shotgun. This thing packs a punch, and obviously because of the tech focus, can even punch through walls and other types of cover. This is fantastic for first starting out a fight to disable those enemies nearest to you. Next up is the Palica, the smart double barrel shotgun. This is actually quite different from our tech shotgun in that the rounds do not penetrate walls in this case, but instead can home in on targets if you aim close enough to them. So with Palica, we don't need perfect aim. We can actually shoot around corners just a bit to land those quick bursts of damage without making ourselves vulnerable to counterattack. Finally, it's not a shotgun, but I do want to recommend one of my very favorite tech weapons early on in the game as a backup weapon for this build, that being the Lizzie Tech Pistol. This is an iconic weapon you can get from Judy's Basement after you've progressed far enough through the main story. This has an insane rate of fire, can apply the burn status effect, and can also penetrate cover just like the Satara Tech Shotgun. So this is a great option while you're looking for your shotguns at the beginning of the game, or also as a finisher or longer range option on the build. It's definitely fun to use. Next, let's talk about grenades. Cyberpunk 2077 has loads of options for grenades, which makes this build very fun to play as well. From anti-personnel, laser bombs, to incendiary, to EMP. 
which is great for dealing with those mechanical targets. You got basic frag grenades, poison grenades, recon grenades, flashbangs. There's just so much to choose from for this build. Remember too that there's also multiple grenade applications such as sticky and homing subtypes for each of the grenades I already mentioned. Those sticky bombs especially, those are pretty nasty against crowds of enemies in tight spaces. So I do recommend getting those. Those are a little bit more rare. Typically though, I'll just go with a basic frag grenade because it's going to get the job done and they're also very cheap and easy to craft. Now speaking of crafting, you can get a lot out of crafting on this build. So we will want to invest some in that crafting skill tree because we want to make, for example, all our own grenades and ammo when possible. This means with enough components, you'll never run out of the supplies you need. For example, basic frag grenades can easily be crafted with just a few of the common components. Same thing goes for our shotgun ammo as well. I was surprised that both the tech shotgun and the smart shotgun, they just use basic shotgun rounds. So it's very easy to have as much as you need. Typically, I'll usually make about 200 or so shells, have those on my character and at least 50 or so basic frag grenades. Just have those available at any time because remember, you can't save or you can't craft gear or ammo while you're in active combat. Moving on to cyberware next. Some of my favorite options for this build are gonna be the more defensive cyberware types. That's because we're always in the thick of things. We're always you know, vulnerable to damage. So cyberware like dermal plating is gonna be one of the best options you can pick up. This can be found in different strengths and rarities that will give you higher NA armor rating. Then there's other forms of subdermal armor as well that can give you protection from specific status effects like the fireproof coating, which protects you from burn. Now, since we do want to use the smart shotgun on this build as well, we'll also need a smart link installed in our hands. This is really important. Without the smart link, you can't make use of the self-targeting system in smart weapons that goes for all smart weapons. So this is a very important piece of cyberware to get. Uh, this can be found at most Ripper docks pretty early on in the game. And this is what's going to enable that smart targeting feature. You can also get a free version from a side quest in Japantown, which I'm using here. This is from the local fixer. Very easy to get as well. Within the skeletal system, titanium bones and the synaptic signal optimizer are great options here for the increased carrying weight and the bonus health. And finally, within the circulatory system, the Kereznikov or any other you know, time altering cyberware piece is gonna be a good option for this build as well for that extra control and flexibility in combat. On to skills and perks. We have quite a bit to cover in this section. Lots of powerful skill trees that we wanna use, including annihilation, athletics, engineering, crafting, and the cold blood skill tree. I'm gonna go through what I think are the most important perks to pick up and their level so you can plan ahead a bit here. Now I do have a written guide for this build as well over on my website, cyberpunkcentral.com slash builds. I'll have all of the perks there as well listed for reference. So I recommend you go check that out when you have a chance. It's just a bit easier to see everything there in list format. So starting off in the annihilation skill tree, this is gonna be our shotgun focused skills. Hail of bullets causes your shotguns to do more damage. This does scale up to 10% based on the rank. Then we have Pump It Louder, which is available starting at level five. This reduces the recoil of your shotguns. Two ranks here, so up to 20% recoil reduction is pretty nice on this setup. The In Your Face perk is absolutely essential. You might actually wanna pick this up first. This reduces the reload time of your shotguns by up to 40%, two ranks here to unlock. The reason why I say this is so important is because your shotguns only have two shots. So you will find yourself reloading quite frequently on this build. Anything you can do to reduce that reload time is gonna be a big help. Starting at level seven, you'll have access to dead center. This increases your damage to the torso area on enemies by up to 20%, lots of extra damage there. Blood rush increases our movement speed while carrying a shotgun. Bulldozer increases crit chance with shotguns. This becomes available at level nine. You have the mongoose perk also at level nine. This increases your invasion while reloading, which is actually pretty cool. And then starting at level 11, you'll have access to momentum shift. This increases your movement speed by up to 20%. And then the massacre perk, this has three ranks. This increases your crit damage with shotguns by up to 45%. Next in the athletics skill tree, this also depends on your body attribute. So you can level it up pretty equally with the annihilation skill line. Pack Mule is available right away. This increases your carrying capacity by 60. I definitely recommend that one. Then the Regeneration Passive, this increases your health recovery. 
Invincible does increase your max health by up to 30% with three ranks there. And then the similar passive here, True Grit, that increases your stamina by up to 30%. The Divided Attention perk is available starting at level 11. This is actually pretty important because it allows you to reload your weapons while sprinting, sliding, and vaulting. This adds a lot of flexibility to your movement. Like a Butterfly is also available at level 11. Dodging does not drain your stamina. And then the Multitasker perk, very similar to Divided Attention, but this allows you to shoot while sprinting, sliding, and vaulting. So those two perks especially are going to open up a lot of options for this build while moving. Marathoner means that sprinting does not drain your stamina. Pretty helpful on this particular build. And then Dog of War, this increases your health regeneration in combat by up to 30% with two ranks there. On to the engineering skill tree, which is obviously one of the central focuses on this build. Starting right away, you'll have access to blast shielding. This does reduce your damage taken from explosives by up to 30%. The can't touch this perk available starting at level five grants you immunity to all effects from your own grenades. So in case you accidentally get too close from like a poison grenade, this is gonna help you quite a bit there. Shrapnel perk starting at level seven does increase the damage dealt by your grenades by 20 additional damage. Grenadier causes the explosion radius of grenades to become visible for your character. And the Blade Runner perk available at level nine, this increases your damage done to mechanical targets by up to 40%. That's a huge boost against things like robots and drones, which you'll start to face more often later in the game. Lock and load increases your weapon reload speed on those smart weapons by up to 10%. So that's gonna affect our smart shotgun. The up to 11 perk allows your charge on tech weapons to increase up to 100% capacity. Bigger booms available at level 11 causes your grenades to deal more damage up to 25% if you max this out to rank five. So more grenade damage there is a good thing. Starting at level 12, you'll be able to unlock the Tesla perk. This increases the charge multiplier for tech weapons up to 55%. The lightning bolt perk increases your crit chance with tech weapons by an additional 10%. And the Uber Charge perk causes your fully charged tech weapons to deal 50% more damage. So we're just stacking tons of extra damage on those tech weapons. Finally, a bit of a quality of life perk here, the Gun Whisperer perk, also available at level 14. This causes your fully charged tech weapons to not shoot automatically. So essentially you can hang on to that charge instead of it firing for whenever you wanna use it. As far as the crafting skill line, you don't actually have to use this. Uh, you can get by without doing any crafting, but I would recommend investing a little bit here. Like I said earlier, being able to craft your own weapons and ammo, including grenades, is very helpful for this build. Now, if you don't want to do that, the most basic perk I would recommend is called Sapper. This is available starting at level 9. This causes your grenades to deal 20% more damage after two perk points are invested. So a little bit of a hidden grenade perk there under the crafting skill tree. And last but not least, let's talk about the Cold Blood skill tree. I picked this for this build because of how much, you know, in your face, brutal kind of combat we actually see on this setup. The Cold Blood skill tree is really going to improve that type of combat style a lot on this build. So right away, make sure you pick up the Cold Blood passive. This is actually what levels up the skill tree to begin with. So you'll start to get those extra, um, you know, skill progression rewards and level up your skill tree once you've unlocked this perk. After defeating an enemy, you get that cold blood status for 10 seconds. It does increase your movement speed as well, which is pretty helpful on this build, honestly. Then starting at level five, you can pick up the will to survive perk. This increases all of your resistances per stack of cold blood. And then the icy veins perk reduces your weapon recoil. Again, per stack of cold blood you have active. Starting at level seven, you'll get access to critical condition. This increases the duration of cold blood by an extra five to 10 seconds, depending on the rank. Defensive clotting at level nine, this does increase your armor by up to 20% per stack of cold blood after two perk points invested. That's very strong uh, defensive perk there. Rapid blood flow also available starting at level nine. This increases your health regeneration inside of combat by up to 100% per stack of cold blood. That's gonna add up quickly. And then coldest blood available starting at level 11. This increases your max stacks of cold blood by one. Finally, frozen precision can increase your headshot damage by 50%. That applies to all weapons. So very good for a shotgun build as well. With perks, don't forget that you can pick up any of these as long as your corresponding attribute it's high enough level. Let's say that my body stat, I've been able to get that up to level 10. 
That means I can pick up any perk set at level 10 or below in the Annihilation skill tree, in the Athletic skill tree, or even the Street Brawler skill tree. My skill level doesn't have to be up to 10, only the level of my attribute. The only reason technically you need to get up to, let's say skill level 20, is to unlock that final trait. Like I said, you don't need to do that for every skill tree on this build. I would say the best one probably is engineering. The revamp perk here, which is that final trait, does give you up to 25% bonus damage to tech weapons. That's the main one I would focus on. And I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, Engineering can be a little bit tricky to level up. Uh, the two main ways of doing this is number one, use grenades. Use grenades a lot, as much as you can, because every time you do damage with a grenade, it's actually leveling up your engineering skill line so you can get that revamp perk all the way at level 20. Then the other way is using those charge shots from tech weapons, so the penetrating shots that pierce through a wall or through cover, anytime you deal damage with one of those, that's gonna level up that engineering skill tree as well, so you can eventually get to engineering level 20. Finally, I just wanna talk about some of the pros and cons on this build and then give you some combat tips. So let's talk about what works well, as well as the potential challenges you're gonna face on this build. Under pros, this build does do a lot of damage, like a lot of damage. We also have some great mobility, as well as some good tech to help us deal with targets that are hiding behind cover. This build is also really good at short and medium range combat with that extra burst damage from shotguns and your ability to combine weapons with explosives like the frag grenade or other unique types of grenades such as poison or burn or blinding effects. This is gonna open up a lot of interesting combinations for combat and interesting play styles, which is gonna be a lot of fun to play. Uh, in terms of the disadvantages, keep in mind that we don't have the best range in terms of a build, so dealing with enemies like snipers on top of roofs might be a little bit tricky or, you know, in more open locations where you can't find cover. I'd say you will be taking uh, some hits early on in this build as you work to kind of get close to enemies. So something with a little bit more range like the Lizzie Tech Pistol, which I mentioned, you can get that very early in the game. And that can actually give you some more flexibility, which is going to help. And then finally, just a few additional combat tips before you head out. Number one, use mobility and use cover to your advantage on this build as much as possible. So sprinting and sliding from one cover section to another can be very helpful in closing the distance on targets, getting you in range where you can use those grenades and your shotguns, obviously. Number two, use those penetrating shots whenever possible. Remember that if the only thing between you and the target is a box or a wall or some type of cover, you can still hit them through that object even though they can't hit you. So stay in cover and still do damage. Number three, use grenades to set up combos on your enemies as much as possible. Not only is it a lot of fun, it's very, very effective. Sometimes the AI in this game is a little bit smart where it tries to move away when you throw out a grenade, but you can actually stop this by briefly staggering them with a quick round of shotgun shells. So what you can do is toss out your grenade, do a quick shot from your shotgun to stagger them, and then watch them blow to pieces as the grenade detonates right next to them. And then finally, use angles and walls to toss those grenades around corners and behind enemy cover. With the right engineering perks, you should also be able to see your grenade's path before you throw it, allowing you to select the right angle before you let go. And with all that said, that's gonna wrap up this build video for Cyberpunk 2077. If you guys enjoyed the video today or you found it helpful, make sure you crush that like button for me. If you have any questions or suggestions, make sure you let me know in the comment section below. And for more Cyberpunk 2077 builds and guides, make sure you hit that subscribe button with your notifications turned on so you don't miss anything. I have several more builds planned, which you should be seeing here soon. Of course, if you'd like to see this build in written format where I have all the skills, perks, weapons listed out for you, head on over to cyberpunkcentral.com slash builds. As soon as this video goes live, the written guide will be there as well to help you out. As always, thanks so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. Stay safe out there and I will see you around in the next video.